Hey guys, this is Linda Dolkey. I'm a demonstrator with Stampin' Up! here in Australia and today we're doing a really cool background technique. This is the salted background technique and I just love it. You know I love a good background technique. Um, you just use salt straight out of your kitchen cupboard. I've used two different types. I've used coarse salt and table salt um, and I hope you enjoyed this card today. It's a lot of fun. So today we're making cute backgrounds and I'm using the salted background technique for this and I'm hoping you can see these probably if I move it closer to the camera you can see we've got our stamped images here but then in the background we've got this great textured background effect um, you don't need much in the way of supplies um, but we're going to it's a, like it's an embossing resist technique um, and as you can see I've made lots of them <laughs> and done some different colors as well so yeah lots of lots of cool backgrounds going on um, now for this just so you know I have used the amazing lovely as a tree set uh, this set is actually no longer available here in Australia uh, it has completely sold out um, if you're in an overseas market you might be able to still get it but it is retiring and discontinuing completely with the end of this catalogue so there's like a week left <laughs> it's coming up um, however in some markets as in ours um, it has already sold out completely so I have used it you can see I've got this oh drop my stamp I've got this big treescape uh, stamp here that I have used on these cards and um, I'm, I've already, just in the interest of time, so we can get started and into it straight away, I've already stamped it on this piece of paper. Now I'm doing it two different ways today. I'm doing one on shimmery white cardstock, which is quite a robust cardstock um, compared to say our Whisper White, which is, is more thin. This um, shimmery white is great for this kind of technique because we're gonna be adding water. So we need to make sure our paper is gonna be able to handle that. And of course I've done one on watercolor paper which is ideal for this if you don't have watercolor paper and you have shimmery white that would also work but I think one or the other of these is the best paper that Stampin' Up! has for this particular technique so we're going to be using an aqua painter with this technique and you've just got to make sure that there is water actually coming through and there is and so I'm just making sure of that first um, because we need to actually get our surface quite wet and I always start with a lighter color um, there's a couple of options. You can squeeze your ink pad together. I'll give it a squeeze to get some ink on the lid, like here. And when I go to pick this up, you can see it's quite easy for me to pick up the paint. Or if you have reinkers, even better because then you just use a couple of drops of reinker. And pick that up. But you do need to make sure it's very wet because we want actually the water to sit on top. So I'm actually just going to start painting straight over the top. So as you can see, I had already embossed these. These have been pre-embossed. Um, the whole point being that we have we don't have a lot of time on the video, and I didn't want you wait, wait, having to watch me do the embossing on this. But I'm just going straight over the top, and as you can see, my design comes out. Okay, so. That's the lighter color. In this case, it's balmy blue that I'm using. And then I also have a darker color. Now, either blueberry bushel or night of navy look great. And I think for this one, we might use blueberry bushel. For the other ones, I use night of navy, but I'm gonna go with blueberry bushel this time. It'll give us a, a little bit lighter, but more of a bright effect. And I do have some blueberry bushel reinker, which I'm going to just put a couple of drops of that. I like using the tops here as a palette. You can also um, use it on a block or a piece of uh, plastic or acetate or something like that. And I'm going to use the same brush, squeeze some more water through and make sure that it's really, really wet. Now this will be quite a bright colour. It's lighter and brighter than the navy, but it's still going to look great with the Barbie blue. Okay, I'm coming in and I'm not going quite as far out as I did before. Now the important thing is I want to keep adding water and I want it to really the water to actually pool on top of the cardstock so I, I can see there's lots and lots of water there and you want to work fairly thickly uh, quickly sorry not thickly quickly 
Don't worry if the trees look like they're disappearing, they'll come back later. And then I'm going to come into my magic ingredient, which in this case is salt. I'm just using some sea salt rocks and also some table salt. So I'm going to start with the bigger ones. I'm going to grab, in, grab a few. And while this is still really wet, I'm just going to sprinkle them around on the surface of my cardstock. So this is why you need it to be wet, because you actually want them to sit in the water or the ink, the wet ink, and actually start to draw out some of that moisture. And it's going to give you a great effect. Now, I mostly want these to be in the sky, um, so I'm not really concentrating on the lower areas. And I'm also going to use some table salt. So this is just normal coarse table salt. It's not super fine, but you can get different kinds of salt and experiment. But you do need to add this while it's still wet. And you'll see once you add the coarse salt, it actually starts to dry quite quickly because it's drawing the moisture out really, really quickly. So, all right. Okay, now I'm actually going to set that one aside. And just another tip, if you're worried about the paper curling, you can uh, use some tape around the edges, like masking tape or even washi tape, just to hold down the edges. And then I'm going to bring in my other one. Now for this one, I've actually used a different stamp set. I've stuck with the tree theme. But this time, because uh, Lovely as a Tree has sold out, we do have another set, which to me is kind of a replacement set. It's called Rooted in Nature. This one, instead of the six stamps that um, we had in Lovely as a Tree, this one has 16. So it's a bigger set. It also has sentiments, and there's also framelets to cut it out. So there are some improvements on the old Lovely as a Tree, even though it's a very much loved set. All right, I'm going to come back here. I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm going to go with the same color scheme again because it might be easier to see the difference. And I'm just going to, there's still a bit of balmy blue in my, sorry, blueberry bushel in my brush, but that's okay. It just means it'll be slightly darker. And this time, same again, I'm going to make sure it's really wet and just go straight over the top. Good thing about these kind of tree sets is they're great for masculine cards or you can use them for Christmas this could be a great Christmas card um, or you could use them for sympathy or thinking of you or anything really it's really really versatile and I think that's why the lovely as a tree set has been so popular over the years definitely a much loved stamp set in fact Stampin' Up even had a little retirement party just for this um, the lovely as a tree set and of course um, this rooted in nature set is going to be a great replacement all right still got plenty of uh, blueberry bushel here so I'm just going to use what I've already got make sure it's really wet again load up that brush with lots of water and come in and go over the top if you want it darker, then yeah, you would go night of navy. But I quite like the brightness of this. So trying to get this as wet as possible. Um, I do sometimes find that the um, watercolour paper curls a little more initially, but they flatten out quite nicely. All right. Maybe we'll just add a tiny, tiny bit of navy just behind the trees to give a little bit of depth in there. Let me squeeze that together. Let's get a bit of ink, there we go. Try and get it wet. And I'm just gonna go behind the trees, just add a bit more depth. Don't those blues look great together? All right, while that's wet, let's go in with our coarse salt. Now, if I was doing this and I had heaps of time not doing a video, I would just allow these to dry naturally and I still think that probably gives you your very best result but you can quite successfully dry it with a heat tool and still get a great look so let's add some thinner salt table salt so I just raided my kitchen cupboard for these things isn't it great that you can raid your kitchen cupboard for crafty things and not have to go out and specifically buy them I love that all right so, in the interest of time, I'm going to bring my heat tool in, but I'm going to speed it up and play a little bit of music so that you don't have to watch quite as long. I'll be back in a second. Okay, guys. 
so at the end here when you're to this point um, then this is the time we're actually just going to get our bin and we are going to just realize that means you can see straight into whatever rubbish is in my bin sorry about that <laughs> all right if you have a brush you can use your finger like I'm doing or you can brush over it just with a little a paintbrush or something like that and I'm going to do the same with the other one so this is the watercolor paper the other one I just did was the shimmery white so I'm getting rid of most of the um, salt with my hands or like I said use a brush and then I have a little brush here I'm just going to go over the rest of it to make sure I've got all the Okay, so I'm hoping you can see here, we have got some fantastic textured effects. Let's bring it up close. Can you see all the fantastic texture around here? It actually looks amazing. And just brings the whole thing to life. How good is that? There we go. Oop, trying to get you right in the middle of the camera there. I think these are fantastic. So a little bit different between the two. This one's a little bit more mottly. I quite like the effect on the shimmery white paper. You get a real mottled look. As you can see, the water has drawn around, drawn out around each of the grains of rice. R not rice, salt. I did rice a couple of weeks ago. If you go back through the videos, you can see we did a similar thing with a rice background. Um, this one is salt. I think salt's a little easier, maybe. I don't know which one's easier to use. They're, they're very similar, um, but they give you a slightly different effect. The rice ones are, as you'd imagine, longer and um, more grainy looking whereas this I think is more mottled and I really love the effect so then I mounted it on a piece of um, cut of cardstock for these ones you probably use uh, uh, the blueberry bushel cardstock for the original ones I did I actually mounted them on navy because I was using navy ink but either way it looks good um, and then you finish them off as you wish you might notice the ones that I did earlier I used a nice long greeting here but you could attach it you know a greeting anyhow you like you could add a bit of ribbon you could do all kinds of bits and pieces with them so fantastic simple little cards that give you a great textured look great for masculine cards great for any cards really so i hope you enjoyed it and i'll be back again next week with something new for you thanks guys bye bye